Hi there, in this video I'm going to be doing a three month review of my Nikon Z8. Now I've had the Nikon Z8 for about three months now and I've taken it out on quite a lot of excursions, mainly doing wildlife photography but some landscape photography as well and I really like it so far. Now in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the specs a little bit, I'm going to talk about what I really like about the camera and there are a few negatives, I'll also tell you about those but mainly I'll be talking about how it's really helped me to enjoy my photography. Now what attracted me to the Nikon Z8 was its claim to be a true replacement for the D850 which is a DSLR camera and it's the first one to have equivalent specs in a mirrorless version and I can really say that so far it's held up to that uh, promise. It's one of the most advanced mirrorless cameras on the market today and it borrows a lot of the technology that was introduced in Nikon's flagship Z9 camera and a lot of that has trickle down so people like us get the benefit of that really high-end camera in a more affordable um, body. What I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to tell you some of the specs of the camera so I'll throw a graphic up on the screen now. We'll start off with this sensor that's a Nikon developed 45 megapixel full frame stack CMOS sensor and I'll get into what a stack sensor is a little bit later in the video. It's also got the latest XSpeed 7 image processor. There's deep learning intelligent autofocus subject recognition. We've got a 20 frames per second raw burst and that will go up to a 120 frames per second if you take images in JPEG. There's a completely blackout free EVF with zero lag. Now when it comes to video we've got 8K at 60p and 4K at 120p with up to 12 bit with NRAW and ProRes RAW. There are two card slots, one is an XQD or Compact Flash Express type B slot and the other is a standard SD card. And it's also the first Nikon camera with USB-C to Ethernet connection. So it's clear to see from the specs that it's more than just a high-end sports camera or wildlife camera, it's going to be a capable um, stills camera and video camera as well. Let's get to talking about the pros and the things I really like about the Nikon Z8. Now first of all we'll start with the ergonomics of the Z8, um, there's a very deep grip um, to get hold of and I've not had any problems at all when I've been hand holding this so it's very comfortable even when I put my 100 to 400 millimeter lens on the front it's still comfortable to hand hold um, and it feels secure and chunky although it is also 15% smaller than the D850 and a whopping 30% smaller than its bigger brother the Z9 and that's mainly because the Z9 has an inbuilt um, battery compartment and vertical grip so you can use it in landscape or vertical. Now you can buy um, a battery grip to put on the Z8 should you wish to. The button layout is very familiar as well, um, it's got a lot in common with the button layout of the Z6 II that I've moved from, um, so that feels familiar, less in common with the D850 but because it's Nikon nothing is that much different just takes a little bit of getting used to for there's a few different positionings of buttons but it doesn't take very long at all. Now what I really do like is on the front there are some fully assignable function buttons. Um, on the Z9 there are three, on the Z8 there are two and what I assign these to is changing the focus modes. Now that is really important um, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I use the focusing a little bit later in the video. One of the advantages that you really do appreciate when moving over to a mirrorless camera is an EVF and the electronic viewfinder in the Z8 is fantastic. It's got a 3.7 million um, dot resolution and it's also got 120 megahertz refresh rate and there's zero blackout as well and no lag at all so you don't notice when you press the shutter it doesn't go black and you get really good feedback of um, lots of information so you can overlay a histogram over the top of the viewfinder and you can also get real-time feedback of 
the exposure that you're going to get from a shot and it just becomes um, so valuable to know what the shot is going to look like pretty much before you press the shutter. Now the screen on the back of the camera is also great. It's really bright. It's touch sensitive as you would expect and it's articulated in many directions. You can lift it up so you can look down at the camera. You can point it down so you can hold the camera above your head but it also articulates out to the side and fully out in that direction so you can have the camera in vertical mode um, and turn it on its side so you can shoot portrait as well and still see the screen on the back of the camera. Next we'll come on to the shutter and the sensor. Now the first thing that you notice when you take a photograph with the Nikon Z8 is just how quiet it is. Um, because there's no mechanical shutter um, all the sounds that are generated are artificial. Now you can turn up the volume of the sound that is made but it is purely there just as an indication that the, sh the camera is actually fired and you can turn it completely off so it is fully silent. Now the sensor itself is a stacked sensor and this basically means there are layers of photo detectors stacked on top of one another and you get the advantages of faster speeds and also better image quality and it can help with the speed of the AF detection. The sensor readout is really quick as well. That's 3.7 milliseconds and there's no rolling shutter either. For a wildlife photographer like me, I really do appreciate the fast burst rate that you can get from the Z8. There's 20 frames per second in RAW and then if you really want to you can get up to 120 frames per second if you lower the quality into JPEG. Now I don't tend to um, use more than 20 frames per second. Um, I've done some burst shots um, of um, a swan that was on a lake and I did a burst of that and got some really nice poses with its wings outstretched and I just find that usually 20 frames per second is absolutely absolutely fine for what I want. But what will happen is if you do start to hit the buffer, um, it will lower the frames per second down to 16, but keep on shooting. So you don't really have any worries anyway. There's a maximum shutter speed of 1 320,000th of a second. Yes, I did say that right, 320,000th of a second. And at one point when it was a bright sunny day, I did manage to get the shutter speed up to this height. So if you're taking photographs of birds that are flapping their wings and you've got a brightly lit condition, you should be really cooking on gas when it comes to taking the photographs of these birds and freezing the action. Now we'll come on to what is undoubtedly the biggest draw that led me to get the Z8 and that's the autofocus and I've been really impressed with the quality of the autofocus and what it's allowed me to do. I was quite disappointed with the autofocus on the Z6 II and I did make quite a few videos um, discussing the drawbacks um, but I do find that the Z8 is so much more reliable. There's lots of different subject recognition modes so you can have face detection, um, animal detection, car, aeroplane and people detection as well. And what will happen is when you point the camera at a subject, it will spot what is in the frame and lock onto it. And the focus point floats about in the, the eyepiece um, and follows the subject. And I've had to really rethink um, the way that I take photographs because of this. I've been used to using single spot AF um, and just moving the camera to track the subject. Now I can keep the camera still and the camera itself will track the subject. I just then need to lock on press the shutter button and it's been so much more reliable um, and I find it so much more pleasurable and it works just as well when you're taking photographs of birds in flight. Um, there are slightly different ways that you need to think about your autofocus. Um, I find that what I do is I put a slightly bigger box um, and it's known as wide L um, and so it covers a about 30% uh, of the screen and as long as the um, subject is within that uh, 
box, then it will pick it up and focus on it. Now, most of the time, particularly if you've got bright conditions or the subject is fairly close to the camera, that will be absolutely no problem at all. But you do get the problem occasionally that the subject is further away um, or you've got a messy background or the conditions are not quite as bright and then that doesn't quite work so well. So what I have done is I've assigned one of the function buttons here on the front of the camera to change into spot focus mode. So when I hold that button down, the wide L box will reduce down into a single spot so I can really nail the focus using the back button focus button. I can definitely say that I've got many more shots that I just would not have been able to get before um, because of the added advantages that I've got from the focus system on the Z8. So I've been really pleased with that. Now I don't take an awful lot of video with the Z8, but while I'm out um, filming a video, I will want to get some extra footage as B-roll um, just to add to the videos, um, particularly when I've got a longer lens on the front um, and I can get closer shots of wildlife, um, I found that the video capabilities have just been really good. The autofocus stays locked onto the subject wherever you move it. And I do tend to have a wide L box as well to just keep the subject within that box. I find that really works very well. But the quality of the video that comes out of the, the camera needs very little done to it. The colors are great. Um, it's really sharp and it's absolutely um, so much better than the D850, which really struggled when taking video. Now there are some downsides to the Nikon Z8. It's not completely perfect. So I'll go over some of the cons now. And firstly, the autofocus is not always completely foolproof. The same as it isn't with any camera. You will always um, miss some shots. The majority of shots are great, but there have been occasions when it's failed to lock onto a bird in flight or just won't find focus at all quick enough. And I have missed some shots, but I definitely have got more shots than I would have done before. So it's not really a negative, but don't expect it to solve every single autofocus issue. The Z8 uses a Nikon ENEL 15C battery, um, which is okay, but you can expect to get through quite a few of these if you're out for a whole day because the Nikon Z8 is quite power hungry. It uses a lot of processing power to do the autofocus. And if you've got the EVF or the screen on, um, then it's just going to consume um, battery. Now, if you are well planned like me, I've got four of these. And so it never is a problem, but you need to make sure that when you go out, you've got plenty of batteries that are fully charged. Otherwise you could find that one or two may not be enough over the course of a long day's shooting. This next one isn't really a negative, it's more of a niggle. Um, for me as a content creator, I would really like the LCD to flip out all the way to face forward so I could film myself. Now, this isn't really positioned as a content creator's camera. It's more specialist, more aimed at wildlife or sports photographers. Um, and so I can understand why that wasn't there, but I really would have liked it because I could have used it then as a vlogging camera as well, and maybe only taken a single camera out with me in the field. Um, it's just slightly uh, disappointing um, that that isn't available. Um, I'd have to use something like an external screen on the top of the camera if I wanted to do that. So in summary, I really have enjoyed using the Z8. It's just a joy to use and the images that I've got from it have just been spectacular. I've definitely got 
images that I wouldn't have been able to get without it. Now it also is really great with the Z lenses as well. I've got the 100 to 400 millimeter lens um, and I found that is much sharper than my Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter lens and I've compared um, shots taken at 400 mil and 500 mil and I barely can tell the difference of that extra 100 mil and so I just don't use that anymore at all because looking very very carefully at the quality of the images I get from the 100 to 400 it's so much sharper and um, I don't have any issues. The Nikon Z8 is an absolutely phenomenal camera. Now I've got to admit, I can't really compare it to any other camera brands because I only really use Nikon. Um, and so I don't know how it compares to a Canon or a Sony. I know that there's some very good cameras from those brands as well, but from the Nikons that I've used, it is absolutely stunning. It's a great camera and I really don't regret buying it. It really has transformed my photography and I'm really excited about what I'm gonna do with it in the future. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, you can leave me a comment down below or you can nip over to my Instagram or Vero account, leave me a comment there and you can also see lots of my photographs. Now, if you like what I do on the channel or want to help support me to make future content like this, then you can also visit my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise and offer, so head off over there because a the purchase really does help me out and it's very much appreciated. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notification notifications really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video that goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, watch out for this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say stay safe and I'll see you soon. <laughs>